Okay, so we are going to, for number 38, simplify the, or perform the indicated operations and simplify our results. So for A, it's just a multiplication problem, and we need to factor three, these three, this one's okay. X squared minus four factors to X plus four, whoops, X plus two, X minus two. It's the difference of two squares. X squared minus 3X minus 10 factors to X minus 5 and X plus 2 because negative 5 and positive 2 add to negative 3 and multiply to 10. Then we've got X plus 5, X minus 5 for X squared minus 25. And then our X minus 2 is just X minus 2. So now we're going to cancel anything that is identical. So X plus 2 cancels x minus 5 cancels, and x minus 2 cancels. So our answer is just going to be x plus 5 over 1, or x plus 5. All right, letter B. Now, you'll notice that B is a division problem, which means that I need to flip the second fraction. However, the first denominator factor, so x squared minus 2x minus 15 becomes x minus 5, x plus 3. And then I'm going to flip this over. Now, immediately, my x minus 5s are going to cancel off. They are identical binomials. But then I have monomials of 6 and 12. And the rules with monomials is I can reduce them just like any old fraction. And I can reduce those by 6. So my final answer is a 1 in the numerator and then 2 times x plus 3. You could also write that as 1 over 2x plus 6. All right, number 39, we have a bunch of addition problems. Nothing has common denominators. So the first thing I want to do is look at A and realize that my least common denominator is actually going to be the product x plus 5 times x plus 4. I can't just put a plus 1 here. That's not how I create common denominators. I need to create them by multiplying. So this needs x plus 5. I'm going to need more space. And this needs x plus 4. Okay, let's do this. We'll, come, we'll get that problem seen in a minute. All right, so that's going to give us, well, x times x plus 4 is going to give us x squared plus 4x over x plus 4, x plus 5. I'm not going to bother multiplying those together. All right, now I've got 5x plus 25 over our same denominator, x plus 4, x plus 5. Now, when I add this up, I'm going to have x squared plus 9x, because 4x plus 5x, I can add those together, plus 25. That does not factor. So the only thing that multiplies to 25 is 5 and 5. So this is my final answer. Letter B. Again, I have two binomials, and they're not the same. So here I'm going to need to multiply by 2x plus 1. And here I'm going to need to multiply by x minus 3. When I multiply 4x times x minus 3, we're going to get 4x minus 12, oh, sorry, 4x squared minus 12x. And then x minus 3, 2x plus 1. Minus, now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to think about this as negative 2x and turn it into an addition problem. That way I'm less likely to make a mistake with that negative and forgetting to distribute it all the way through my problem. So that's going to give me negative 4x squared minus 2x over x minus 3, 2x plus 1. Now when I put together my like terms, it's kind of nice because the 4x squareds cancel off and negative 12x minus 2x becomes negative 14x over x minus 3, 2x plus 1. Okay, so here's that letter C that we skipped from before. And we've got a complex fraction here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to turn everything into a fraction. So I'm going to make this 4 over 1 and 5 over 1. And recognize that I have four denominators, 3, 1, 1, and x. 
if I have 3, 1, 1, and x, my common denominator is going to be 3x. So I'm going to go to each of my four parts. I got like 1, 2, 3, 4, and add what they need. So this needs the whole 3x. I wish I had made this bigger. Hey, wait, let's do that. Whoa, it's ginormous. All right. So this, we decided, it needs to be 3x, so I need an x, a 3x. This also needs a 3x, and this just needs a 3. So I have four fractions here. My first fraction is x squared over 3x. So I did x times x. Minus, now I have 4 times 3x is going to be 12x. Now I'm going to have 3x times 5 is 15x over 3x. Plus 3 over 3x. Now I'm going to add everything together. So in the numerator I've got x squared minus 12x over 3x. In the denominator I've got 15 plus x plus 3 over 3x. Now what's awesome is when I go to divide this and I flip the second fraction, because I've created a common denominator for the entire problem, the 3x and the 3x will cancel. And my final answer is going to be x squared minus 12x over 15x plus 3. All right, number 40. Solve each equation. Check for extraneous roots. Both of these are just proportions, and all I'm going to do is cross multiply. So I'm going to do negative 2 times x plus 1, and that's going to give me negative 2x minus 2 equals, and now I'm going to do negative 8 times x minus 1, and that's going to give me negative 8x plus 8. I have variables on both sides, so I'm going to add 8x. And that's going to give me 6x minus 2 equals 8. I'm going to add 2. And that gives me 6x equals 10. I'm divide by 6. I'm out of space, so I'm not going to show that. And I'm going to get x equals, either you can write it as 5 thirds, or you can write it as 0.6. So, are they extraneous? Well, what does that mean? That means that if I put my 0.6 into the denominator, I would have 0, or it wouldn't make my solution fit. So 0.6 minus 1 is OK, and 0.6 plus 1 is OK. All right, letter B. When I cross multiply, cross multiply now, x times x minus 1 is going to be x squared minus x equals, uh-oh, I'm going to have a space problem. This I want to write carefully, because I want to make sure I multiply these binomials correctly using the FOIL method or whatever you like. That's going to give me 2x squared outside minus 10x plus 7x minus 35. Well, that's going to give me, hold on, let me get some space here. Okay, so now I'm going to put together my like, whoop, I'm going to put together my like terms. Switch to a different color. There we go. Back to blue. And now I still have x squared minus x on the left, but that's going to give me 2x squared minus 3x minus 35. And I see I've got a quadratic. So I'm going to put everything on the right side because I have 2x squared, and it would be much easier to solve if it was a, one, a positive 1. So that's going to give me negative x equals 1x squared minus 3x minus 35. Now we're going to add x. We've got 0 equals 1x squared minus 2x minus 35. So we need to think what adds to negative 2 and multiplies to 35. Well, we know it has to be 7 and 5, so it's going to be x minus 7 and x plus 5. When I set each of these equal to 0 and solve, I would get x equals 7 and x equals negative 5. And both of them are solutions. 
right, number 41, match each equation to its graph. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this primarily by just looking at the asymptotes. I know that A and B immediately have vertical asymptotes of X equals 3, and C has X equals negative 2, and D has X equals positive 2, because all I did was set my denominators equal to 0. If you have a denominator that equals 0, you cannot divide, and that's where the vertical asymptotes come from. So since C is the only one with a negative 2 denominator, I know that it has to be 4. And because D is the only one with a 2 denominator, I know it has to be 3. All right, so A and B have to match with 1 and 2. They both have vertical asymptotes of 3. The difference is, is that B has this plus 1 here, and that tells me I have a horizontal asymptote of Y equals 1 versus 41A has nothing here. That's like 0, so it's Y equals 0. Whoop, what was that? Y equals 0. So, Y equals... Wait a second. I screwed something up. That one's not 3. That's, I thought that was 2. This is at 3. Back up the train. Sorry. Someone was just like, Miss Strauss, you screwed that up. 2 goes with D. It's at 2. Sorry. I saw this. I, for some reason, I thought this was at 2, but this one's at 2. So that D matches with 2. 1 and 3 both have vertical asymptotes at 3. So... This one, and I knew that that one was, didn't work because I didn't have the right vertical asymptotes. So A has to match with 1. We have a vertical asymptote. No, it doesn't. Man, I'm just, I need to go to take a nap. A matches with 3. Woo! Because it has a vertical asymptote at 3 and a horizontal asymptote at 0. And B matches with 1 because it has a vertical asymptote at 3 and a horizontal asymptote at 1. And this is clearly a good place to stop.